Uh, I'm Frances Harding, and this is my latest book, Deep Light. Uh, Deep Light is a standalone YA fantasy set in an alternative world. Uh, it's, it's set in a place called the Myriad, a huge sprawling archipelago where for centuries the islanders were terrorised by these extremely large, hideous, sinister deep sea gods. In theory, you'd think that as somebody who works from home, I would find all this really easy. But in actuality, I usually thrive on variety. Uh, I don't stay still very much. Uh, I'm always heading out on four hour walks or visiting places for literary festivals or research or meeting up with friends or something like that. So um, uh, I've, I've been going a little stir crazy and squirrely, but I, I'm aware that a lot of other people have much worse problems. In some respects, it's been useful to have a lot of the distractions taken away so that I can focus on my writing. But I, I do, I do actually need changes of scene. So my productivity has been a bit on and off. I guess the place that I feel the strongest affinity to, that a lot of uh, other writers have responded to, is Oxford. Uh, I moved there when I was about 19 and then didn't leave there for about 20 years. Uh, I remember going there for my university interview and thinking, I have got to live here. I can think better here. And I, I'm still a little in love with the place. I still miss it. It's a bit of a long story, but I once had an impromptu lightsaber duel with a fellow author in a bar. Uh, after which, the person who owned this toy lightsaber very kindly gave it to me, and I've had it ever since. It, it is silly, but it does make me smile every time I look at it. Uh, it's fun, and a little bit sick. It has to be said that when people visit our house, if they don't know us, they tend to look around at our possessions and say, oh, so, so how many kids do you have then? And we have to say, none. We've just filled our house with toys and games. The islanders of this archipelago were terrorised for centuries by these very large, very sinister and inscrutable sea gods who would occasionally rise from the deep and do unsociable things like eating people. Until one day, quite unexpectedly, they turned on each other and tore each other apart and nobody knows why. But since that time, the islanders have learned that little pieces of, of dead gold are actually really useful. You can form new forms of technology from them. So many people on these islands take to the seas in rickety little submarines in the hope of finding the right little bit of dead gold that will allow them to make their fortune. My main character, Hark, is a 14-year-old orphan and is a bit of a con artist bit of a petty thief, a way of surviving. And during the course of the story, he will find himself with a piece of dead God. But unlike any other God relic he has ever heard of, this one occasionally moves as if it was still alive. They say you can sail a thousand miles along the island chain of the Myriad from the frosty shores of the north to the lush, sultry islands of the south. They say that the islanders are like the red crabs that race along the shore, hardy, unpredictable, and as happy in the water as out of it. They say that the ocean around the myriad has its own madness. Sailors tell of great whirlpools that swallow boats and of reeking ice-cold jets that bubble up to the surface and stop the hearts of swimmers. Black clouds suddenly boil into existence amid flawless skies. They say there is a dark realm of nightmares 
that lies beneath the true sea. When the undersea arches its back, the upper sea is stirred to frenzy. They say that the undersea was the dwelling place of the gods. They say many things of the myriad, and all of them are true. The gods were as real as the coastlines and currents, and as merciless as the winds and whirlpools. The glass cardinal throttled galleons with translucent tendrils. The red forlorn floated like a cloud of blood in the water. Kalmadath howled with a razor lattice instead of a mouth. Dolla lurched through the water, kicking with dozens of human legs. The hidden lady waited in the silent deeps, shrouded by her own snaking hair. Now and then, one would rise from the undersea and appear in the pale light of day, devouring schooners, smashing ports to flinders, and etching their shapes into the nightmares of all. Some of them sang as they did so. For centuries the Lord gods ruled the myriad through awe and terror, each with its own cluster of islands as territory. Human sacrifices were hurled into the waters to appease them, and every boat was painted with pleading eyes to entreat their mercy. They were served, feared and adored. Then, without warning, the gods turned on each other. It took barely a week for them to tear one another apart, a week of tidal waves and devastation. Many hundreds of islanders lost their lives. By the end, no living gods remained, only vast corpses rolling in the deep. Even 30 years after this cataclysm, nobody knows why it happened. The gods are still mysterious, though the fear of them is slowly waning. They say that a coin-sized scrap of dead god can make your fortune if the powers it possesses are strange and rare enough, and if you are brave enough to die for them. This is also true. Whether you're watching this in a classroom or at your kitchen table at home, here are some writing exercises so you can take your imagination for a spin. There are three options, and it's up to you which one you'd pick. Option one. Someone is pretending to be someone they're not. Who are they and why are they doing this? And what will happen if people see through them? Option two. When wallpaper in an old house is peeled away, Scrawled writing is discovered on the wall underneath. What does it say? Who wrote it and why? Option three. Write about an incident from three different people's points of view. They all describe it quite differently, though none of them are lying, or at least none of them think they're lying. <laughs> 